Hey, what's going on, guys? It's the Short Sports Show. I'm your host, Daniel Short. Today is Tuesday, December 10th, 2013, and we have a lot to talk about, including the BCS Bowl Games, uh, what's happening starting December 21st. Also, uh, injuries to top players in the NFL um, and this crazy uh, weather game with blizzards and everything that's going on. Um, and also some coaching changes, possible coaching changes at major universities. Uh, we'll talk all about that right now. And we got a lot to talk about, some news going across the uh, across all sports right now. And, and, and a major report came out just early this morning uh, of University of Texas head coach Mac Brown possibly stepping down after 16 years uh, being the head coach at, for the Texas Longhorns. That now he is now denied that report, uh, saying that he is in Florida right now doing some recruiting uh, before they have their game against Oregon in the Alamo Bowl, uh, which we will talk more about bowl games in just a little bit. But that came out this morning saying he was going to step down and 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 you know what's going to happen. When is he going to do it? Uh, I believe this is the last year for for Mac Brown. I think maybe that report it, it could be a, a false rumor. Um, it could be you know just. People just saying that, but um, or it could be true is what I'm trying to say. I I, th- I think this is the last year. What I mean, if he's smart, I would have just done it before the bowl game. And I know that looks bad, but remember early in the year, Texas gave up you know over what 200 rushing yards uh, to BYU early in the year, and, and I know they fired the defensive coordinator after that, and they're. Defense got a little bit better, not too much, but a little bit better stopping the run. Um, but now you're going against Oregon in the Alamo Bowl, uh, which is going to be a crazy game. And a lot of people want to see that. Um, but Oregon, you know, they're fast, upbeat offense and everything they got going. Um, you know, I know the past two games for Oregon, they, they've been stopped. But th- those were good Arizona team and, and uh, a Stanford team right there. So that, you know, you can't really just say, oh, Texas is going to be able to stop them and, and this and that. No, that's completely different. Arizona and Stanford have a much tougher defense than Texas does right now this season. And with that, um, you know, Oregon going to, you know, look into, you know, show, you know, not that they got robbed of a bowl game. I mean, because they kind of did it to themselves. They lost those two games, but they they you know they want to show that one they can beat Texas. They want to show that they can do that because you know it's Texas. Just the name itself holds a lot, and, and to be able to beat them and being the Alamo Bowl's most viewed bowl game actually uh, next to the national championship game. Or uh, I know it's the most viewed bowl game that it's not a BCS bowl game. I know that's for sure, if not the second most watched bowl game uh, over the past five years or so. Uh, and this game, you know, it's going to be very viewed by a whole lot of people. And, and uh, I, I just think Mac Brown probably should do it, probably should, uh, if, if he is going to step down, probably should do it before the game just because, um, you know, might as well go... I mean, they lost to Baylor, so you can't really go on top. But just end it right there be- before you get embarrassed against Oregon because that game is most likely is going to be a blowout. And so, I don't know. That, that was just a, a report that came out. So, uh, before we get into bowl games and some other news in, in college football, I'm going to go ahead and recap uh, what happened. This was conference championship week uh, for majority of the teams that were there. Uh, you know, the main game was obviously the SEC championship game, and I had no idea that was – I knew that game was going to be close. I had no idea that game was going to be a, a shootout in the way it was. I really thought both defenses would have kind of settled down after the first half, but no. Auburn escapes thanks to Trey uh, Mason's three-touchdown performance and, and trying to get his Heisman uh, votes up uh, against Missouri. And the final score is 59-42. Uh, Trey Mason – Really, to me, I didn't even hear about him until the Alabama game. Um, that that was the first time I heard about him, and so I really don't think um, you know w- once it comes around for the Heisman, which I think is actually this Saturday. Um, I, I don't I don't think he, he should deserve it, but a person that does deserve the Heisman, I think, um, and I know people are going Jameis Winston, Jameis Winston. Well, here's my case against Jameis w- Winston. Now I do like Jameis Winston, and I, I'm I'm pretty sure he's going to win it just because, you know, that's all we've been talking about since we saw his breakout game against Wake Forest. Um, And so most likely, yes, he is going to win the Heisman. But what I think is that 
the person, the player that should win it is actually the running back out of Boston College, Andre Williams. I, I believe that guy should win. He has over 2,000 rushing yards. I mean, no other running back in the nation has that. He He's 17 rushing touchdowns. This guy is, is a powerhouse, six, six foot, 227, and, and no one's talking about him. I don't understand why. Now, here's my case against Winston. Uh, you know, we have to compare him, you know, as a freshman quarterback, uh, freshman redshirt. Who won it last year? A freshman redshirt named Johnny Manziel. You look at the stats, Manziel had better stats last year than, he, than Winston does this year. So that, that should carry a little bit of weight right there. And also, not saying Manziel should win it this year because he won't and he shouldn't, but he has better stats than he did last year as a sophomore now. So that's another thing to think about. So I, I think that carries a little bit more weight to see what Manziel did now comparing him to, to Jameis Winston. Now you could say, oh, there's, there's different systems and, and different, you know, they're going to, one's against the SEC, one's against the ACC. Well, then that, that should, you know, <laughs> do it in itself that Manziel played better competition in the, a, in the SEC than Winston did in the ACC. So do I believe Jameis Winston will win the Heisman? Yes, he will. But do, do I think he should? No. After I've seen what Andre Williams has done, I know he only had like I think twenty nine rushing yards or forty nine rushing yards against uh, Syracuse, which is not that good against a Syracuse team that's been lacking this year. Should have had a whole lot more. But this guy is a really good running back for rushing two thousand yards, and no one talking about him is ridiculous. People were talking about Trey Mil- uh, Mason. And, and yeah, he's had good games against Alabama, LSU, and, and now Missouri, uh, which is great. But I mean, you look at stats, and, and isn't that what we should go by? I don't know. I, I think Andre Williams is, is should be the person who uh, wins the Heisman, but most likely it will be Jameis Winston. Also, Michigan State beats Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship, twenty-four to thirty, thirty-four to twenty-four. Uh, Michigan State getting the win, and I knew it. I knew it from the beginning. I knew Michigan State's defense was really, really good, even though they gave up over 200 rushing yards to, to Ohio State, which was blew my mind. But still, they were able to to get, uh, I was going to say Terrell Pryor, to Braxton Miller. They were able to get Braxton Miller out of the pocket and, and make force him to make mistakes, feel uncomfortable, and Michigan State's defense held on. And, and thankfully, their offense came alive. I, I really thought it was going to be a lot low scoring, a lot more low scoring game than it was. But Michigan State does go uh, and beat Ohio State for the Big Ten championship. Also, Florida State handles Duke. Uh, poor Duke. I mean, they they are a pretty solid team, but man, that it was sad to see that they got blown out, forty five to seven. Florida State wins the ACC championship. Oklahoma takes down the uh, takes away the BCS bowl uh, away from Oklahoma State with a thirty three to twenty four win. Over Oklahoma State and uh, Oklahoma State, if they would have won that game, they would have gone on to the Fiesta Bowl. But Oklahoma and that big rivalry took them out, and, and now it's going to be uh, Oklahoma that goes to the Sugar Bowl and, and Baylor going to the Fiesta Bowl now. Also, Stanford takes care of Arizona State 38-14 to win the Pac-12 championship. And Baylor wins its last home game at their current stadium against Texas, a 30-10 to victory. Baylor wins their first Big 12 title in a very, very long time, and it will be appearing in their first BCS bowl game for the first time in Baylor's uh, boring history. Uh, I still hate Baylor. <laughs> but uh, here are the bowl games. The first bowl game is December 21st, which uh, will be Washington State at uh, or it's not at, but versus Colorado State. I won't go through all the bowl games, but the bowl games that stick out in my mind that I, I believe that are, are going to be very, very good games, um, which I'll talk more once they get close, uh, but I just want to list them real quick, is the Russell Athletic Bowl, Miami versus number 18, Louisville. See if Miami can bounce back and how Teddy Bridgewater uh, is going to play in this last game as the Louisville Cardinal. How is he going to go out? I, I still, for the people that think Teddy Bridgewater, uh, Teddy Bridgewater is, is uh, the number one overall quarterback in this year's draft, then you're you're saying this year's draft it, as quarterbacks is going to be really bad because to me he's done nothing this year. I know they only have one loss and, and they've been you know good. I, I just I, to me I, I don't think he's he's gonna he's a good starter in the NFL. I think he's gonna be uh, 
it's going to take a whole lot of time to develop, if not just become a bust in the NFL. Um, then the Alamo Bowl, number 10, Oregon versus Texas. I was talking about it just a minute ago. Oregon's got this game all the way. Uh, it's going to be an interesting matchup to see that. Then the Chick-fil-A Bowl with number 24, Duke versus Texas A&M at number 21. That'll be a pretty interesting game to see how Duke can uh, play against A&M. Johnny Manziel and possibly, most likely, his last game as a Texas A&M Aggie. How will that go? Then the Outback Bowl, Iowa versus LSU. And the reason I list that game is Iowa's got a you know pretty solid defense and has had for you know past few years. Against LSU's offense, you know, powers, run game, and, and all that other good stuff. I think that's a, it's going to be a real, really good game. Just, you know, uh, a defensive game for both teams. Uh, I do see LSU coming out on top, but uh, I think that's going to be a pretty interesting game. And then the Capital One Bowl, not, number 19, Wisconsin versus number 9, South Carolina. Then Rose Bowl, number 5, Stanford versus number 4, Michigan State. And finally, we have some other teams other than Wisconsin uh, and who did Wisconsin always play? Was it Oregon? No, I can't remember. But was it always was Wisconsin, and and I think probably it was Stanford. Maybe it was Stanford. But now we have Michigan State. That's gonna be really good to see how they go against uh Tyler Gaffney, how he's gonna be able to be effective against Michigan State's defense. Uh, Michigan State's defense did was pretty weak against Ohio State's uh, rushing offense. So. You know, with uh, Stanford having Tyler Gaffney, he could be pretty good in that game. Then the Fiesta Bowl, number 15, U- UCF versus number 6, uh, Baylor. Wow, that is going to be probably the worst worst Fiesta Bowl game ever, 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 ever. I mean, UCF, yeah, they're good, but that is just, ugh, that is boring. That is a boring matchup right there. Then the Sugar Bowl. Number 11, Oklahoma versus number 3, Alabama. Wow, that game is also, I think it's going to be one-sided all the way. I think Bama's just going to take it all out on Oklahoma. Oklahoma is, uh, I don't know, their offense, I, I, I can't see Blake Bell or Trevor Knight doing anything against Alabama's defense. And, you know, Alabama's upset, you know, what's happened, that, you know, knowing that they should have been in, in the national championship against Florida State. <laughs> poor Oklahoma. Uh, then the Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma State versus Missouri. Former Big 12 rivalry right there. Li- nice to see that uh, matching up against the Cotton And one thing I do have a problem with, the Cotton Bowl, is w- that it's not at the Cotton Bowl. It's at the AT&T Stadium, you know, Cowboy Stadium, whatever. Uh, it's it's so, it's, I don't know, that, that frustrates me. I mean, it's called the Cotton Bowl for a reason, and, and yet... It's at the Cowboy Stadium, and, and the Cotton Bowl has so much history. When you know when Jim Brown played uh, for Syracuse and Ernie Davis, and I, I don't know, I just think of the the movie The Express. I think of all that happening at the Cotton Bowl, and when Texas was really good, and they played Syracuse, and uh, TCU used to go there. So it's there's so much history in that stadium. I think the Cotton Bowl is, is uh, the second best stadium next to the Rose Bowl, and and I f- I find it a little disrespectful that the Cotton Bowl game is at Cowboy Stadium and not at the Cotton Bowl. I don't know. That's it's probably a little little thing, but to me it just it's pretty dumb that it's not there. Then the Orange Bowl, number twelve, Clemson, taking on number seven, Ohio State. Taj Boyd. I had so much faith in you, and I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it to the very end in this last game against Ohio State. Your last game to show the NFL scouts why you're the number one quarterback and, and you should be taken. Uh probably <laughs> probably by the Houston Texans and Taj Boyd, I, I hope you do it. I, I, and he's going to go against the Ohio State defense that's not that good. So, uh, I mean, if Michigan State can put 34 points on, on Ohio State, I'm pretty sure Clemson can score up there as well with uh, Sammy Watkins and, and, and Taj Boyd. So we'll just have to see. And then finally, the BCS National Championship game, number one Florida State versus number two Auburn. I'm going to wait to talk about that game uh, until the, you know, the night before, depending on, uh, is it uh, January 8th? Is that what the game is? I have to check, um, but I will probably just have an entire show just going all over the, that, the keys of victory, the stats, the players and, and everything. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's going to be a really good game, but we'll go on some to, uh, to blah, 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 can't talk some news. Wyoming hired the new head coach and it's Craig Bull from North Dakota state. 
Uh, he's been at North, North Dakota State for 11 years and has a 101 to 32 uh, rec- winning record, and has la- and has won the last two FCS uh, championships and is looking to three peat. Um, something Alabama can't do. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I-, I think that's a good pickup for Wyoming, and and this coach uh, shows that he can win and and. Uh, moving up to the next level at Wyoming is uh, going to be pretty good to see how Wyoming, how they can do. He, he's going to know the area uh, and recruiting wise and should do good. UCLA's linebacker Anthony Barr wins the lot impact trophy with 20 tackles for loss, 10 sacks, five forced fumbles and 62 tackles uh, to this year. And uh He's, a, he's the number one linebacker. If you haven't heard of him, go look him up. Go look at some highlights. This guy is an absolute beast. And if those stats didn't just tell you that, I, I don't know. I don't, there's something wrong with you because that guy is really good. And uh, if your team's in, in, in you know, going to be in a high first-round pick, a top-ten pick, uh, and needs a linebacker or needs someone on defense to make plays, that is the guy to start looking out for. Uh, we'll go ahead and start talking about the NFL. Patriots tied in Rob Gronkowski, Taurus, ACL, and MCL uh, in a comeback win versus the Browns and also suffered in concussion all in that one hit uh, by Cleveland Browns safety TJ Ward. That, that's got to suck. Not only did you just get in concussion, which is probably, probably the last thing on your mind now that you just tore your ACL and your MCL out for the year. And last year, if people don't remember, Rob Gronkowski um, – had surgery on his forearm and his back. So this guy is just taking so much beating. And, and for a really good tight end, and, and he's, he's a young uh, player, I, I really hope he can somehow come back from all these injuries and just be healthy uh, because this guy is, is huge for the Patriots offense. Uh, also, Tyron Matthew also tore his ACL and LCL uh, in the win over to the St. Louis Rams. He was up for possible defensive rookie player of the year. And... Uh, that is all gone now. Tyron Matthew, I'm not a huge fan of him uh, just because I think that he, he was more of a per- player that just had hype around him than actual uh, top potential. I mean, I know he was pretty good. I'm, I'm not going to say he's not that good, but I just I think there's more hype than what there really is to him. Um, but it is a huge loss for the Arizona Cardinals. And also, Adrian Peterson got a huge scare, uh, but should be okay. He sprained his foot in a crazy loss versus the Ravens. If you guys haven't watched that game, go rewatch it. And uh, should be able to play this week, um, but it was pretty scary because it looked like his ankle just kind of bent weird. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to be out again. Um, but he, he should be okay. So some scores, the San Diego Chargers, I have to start off with them. I have to start off with my San Diego Chargers. They dominate the the New York Giants 37-14, and that's what Eli Manning gets. He cannot play the Chargers well at all, no matter what year it is. We always find a way to stop them, and uh, I I was so happy that we beat the Giants. That was a game that I know people are saying the Chargers season, uh, their playoff hopes are still there. I really don't think it is because, one, we played Denver Broncos this Thursday. That's going to suck. Then we have uh, Oakland and Kansas City last two games. Thankfully, they're at home, but really uh, one loss, especially against the Broncos, that's it for the season for sure, for sure. And uh, But I, I don't know if it's a good thing if we even win this, even if we won all three and, and somehow made the playoffs. We'd be playing, oh, man, who are we going to be playing? We'd probably be p- playing the Kansas City Chiefs. and, and that No, not the Kansas City. They take wild card. Probably Cincinnati Bengals, and uh, that could actually be a pretty good game. So maybe maybe I do want the Chargers. I don't know. I don't want to get embarrassed on playoffs, so who knows about that. Uh, the Bengals crushed Indianapolis Colts 42-28, to and with the loss for the Indianapolis Colts, they also clinched um, the AFC South title. So they will have uh, the fourth seed in the... Uh, in the playoffs because I don't see them moving up past the Bengals and and surely not going to the second seed. Uh, The Packers come back against the Atlanta Falcons 22-21. Matt Flynn gets his first win as a Packer um, reuniting this year. Then the Patriots get some calls to go their way and come back versus the poor Cleveland Browns in a 27-26 victory. Jason Campbell, though, is pretty solid quarterback. 391 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions against the Patriots. Did a really good job. And I, I think people, if you get, if you have your fantasy team, go pick up Jason Campbell. He is doing a pretty solid job the past three weeks. I know he had a concussion uh, last week, but obviously that didn't affect him at all. 
Jets handled the Raiders 37-27. to LaShawn McCoy runs over 217 yards and two touchdowns in a blizzard game versus Detroit. Uh, final score 34-20. to Steelers and the sidelines are not friends at all. Uh, wide receiver Antonio Brown had a game-winning touchdown called back uh, because his foot went out of bounds and the Dolphins end up winning the game 34-28. Uh, Buccaneers winning an ugly victory, 27-6 to over the Bills. And the poor, poor Redskins, man, they are terrible this year. They get crushed by the Kansas City Chiefs, 45-10, to and they were no fans past the third quarter. I mean, there were absolutely nobody there. Um, and, I mean, I can understand why. <laughs> why are you going to be out in the cold when you're seeing your team just get absolutely demolished and, and having such a poor season this year? Also, the Vikings can't hold on against the Ravens. 29-26 after a pass interference call let them down the field, uh, let the Ravens down the field and end up getting the game-winning touchdown. Joe Flacco to Malcolm Brown. And, and then the Titans uh, blow the lead versus the Broncos after he ha- had a touchdown lead at halftime. <laughs> Just gave it away. Final score, Denver Broncos 51-28 over the Titans. Cardinals beat the Rams 30-10 and the Seahawks and Earl Thomas apparently can, don't know how to tackle Frank Gore. That that was just something they forgot to practice or something because they end up losing the game 19 to 17 and if Earl Thomas would have just made that one tackle and and people that watch the game you know what I'm talking about. It was a, like a 51-yard run. If he just made that one tackle and not have I don't know, he took the worst angle anybody could ever take and I'm not saying I could I could have done a better job cuz obviously I wouldn't. Um but, but I'm just saying if he knows he's a Pro Bowl player, he knows how to play, and he just took the worst angle possible and ended up getting beat by uh, Frank Gore and, and by the 49ers overall. Then the Saints get back to their winning ways with a 31 to 13 victory over Carolina. Cam Newton and the Panthers offensive line were completely lost in that game. It looked like that was their first game they've ever played as a unit. That was a terrible game, and, and, and I think it's a sign uh, for the playoffs for the Panthers. I know people are really excited. Oh, Cam Newton is finally leading his team to a winning record and going to the playoffs. Yeah, he's going to lead them to a winning record, and yes, he's going to lead them to the playoffs. Guarantee first round out just like that because there's no way they're going to be able to compete against the playoff team unless it's the Dallas Cowboys. Actually, the Cowboys, they're out now. They're, Cowboys lost to the Bears 45-28. I was at work, and, and I texted my cousin. I was like, you know, what's the score? I'm on break. Sends me a picture, 45-28. Uh, Josh McCown was the quarterback for the Bra- uh, for the Bears. Are you kidding me? That is terrible. Oh, my goodness. Cowboys absolutely blew it. Now the Eagles have are going to win the NFC uh, East. And, and wow, Bears somehow keep their playoff hopes alive with Josh McCown at quarterback. Um, but back to the Panthers, yeah, I think it's a sign. They look lost. They look just bad uh, against the Saints. And I know the Saints are a good team, but it was just bad overall for for Carolina. And I really think they are uh, they're going to be lost in the playoffs, and and they're going to be. I guess it's just the experience. I, I, I guess that's if you want to give them an excuse, it's got to be for that reason because they were they just looked terrible out there. And uh, now we're gonna start talking about the Major League Baseball. Uh, I I kind of rushed through the NFL just because I really thought there was a lot more to talk about, and I I, I was afraid that uh, we were gonna run out of time, but we should have plenty of time now. Uh, but Major League Baseball news came out today. Actually, there was just breaking news about two minutes ago. The Colorado Rockies acquire starting pitcher Brent Anderson from the Oakland A's for, um, for let's see, uh, 2010 fifth overall pick Drew Pomez and a uh, single A right handed pitcher uh, Chris Jensen, um, according to some reports, and that is from Sports Center and uh, Team Stream, who I use a lot. They really get some information. You guys haven't ch- checked out their app. Go check it out. Uh, so the A's still making moves, and I I think that was just to free up cap space, but I really don't think they should have traded Brent Anderson. He, he was really good, um, but I, I'm pretty sure that was just for cap space only. Uh, and uh, Speaking of trades, one just happened about an hour ago. A three-team trade, including the Los Angeles Angels, really the Anaheim Angels, uh, the White, Chicago White Sox, and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Mark Trumbo will be going to the Arizona Diamondbacks, which it hurts uh, us for the Dodgers because he is a really good player. Uh, Adam Eden will go to the Chicago White Sox, and the, um, 
and the uh, LA Angels will get Hector Santiago and Tyler Skaggs, uh, both pitchers uh, from the Chicago White Sox. And uh, really, the I, I guess I guess the two winners is Arizona getting Mark Trumbo, and at, and the Chicago White Sox getting Adam Eaton. White Sox need help at their pitch. Uh, excuse me, with their uh, with their lineup, that's going to help them out right there. And Mark Trumbull is going to bring that power to Arizona that they uh, that they've been needing after they lost uh, Justin Upton in free agency last year. Roy Holiday signed a one day co- uh, contract with the Toronto Blue Jays yesterday to retire with the team. And Roy Holiday, you will be missed. Uh, great years with the Phillies and and past and and, the, and past that. Uh, and uh, it's going to be sad to see him go. Really good pitcher. Uh, Miami Marlins signed Garrett Jones to a two-year, $7.75 million contract. Um, that I guess that's going to be their power bat. That's how you know Miami Marlins are struggling. If that's going to be their, their, their cleanup hitter, I, I hope not because Marlins, Garrett Jones is, is okay, six-year veteran, but... That is not the guy you have to rely on as as your power bat in the lineup. He, he's more of a sixth or seventh hitter on the lineup to, for for a solid team. He's a sixth or seventh, if not coming off the bench, uh, type of player. But for the Miami Marlins, it looks like he's going to be their third or fourth uh, batter. Yesterday, Joe Torre, Tony Larusa, and Bobby Cox were unanimously elected to the Hall of Fame. Uh, they are headed to Cooperstown for 2014. That is awesome to hear. Uh, that all those are really good uh, coaches that will be going on uh, to the Hall of Fame. Yankees still trying to move, making some moves. They are uh, open to trade Brent Gardner after signing a few offseas uh, in the offseason, signing some outfielders. Uh, they're open to trade Brent Gardner, who free up some cap space for them as well. And uh, really, I, I could see him probably going to. Uh, Oh, of course, I had the team in my head. Probably Blue Jays. Uh, even though I know they're in the same uh, division, Blue Jays need some outfield help, and, and I think I, I think that could be a pretty solid fit for the Blue Jays, but I, I don't know if the Yankees would do it just because they're in the division. Uh, but it sounds like a good deal to me. Uh, Phillies also opened a trade outfielder Dominic Brown. The 26-year-old hit 27 home runs last year uh, for the Phillies, and why would they trade him? I, I don't know. I, and I, I actually see a Phillies... Uh, Rangers and Dodgers trade right there, three team trade. Uh, I can see Andre Ethier going to either Philadelphia or uh, the Texas Rangers, and and uh, and the Dodgers getting Dominic Brown. At least that's what I hope. I know we got, have a ton of outfielders, but Dominic Brown would bring not only speed uh, but obviously power uh, bat that that would be nice to have, uh, and possibly to replace Carl Crawford. Uh, pretty soon because Crawford getting older and having some injuries would help the Dodgers to have Dominic Brown. Also, Mike Napoli agrees to a two-year, $32 million deal to come back to the Boston Red Sox. Uh, and they had a picture calling the beard is back. And uh, Mike Napoli will, will help him out with catchers moving all around. Seems like catchers have been the hot target this offseason with catchers going everywhere. Um, and, and that looks like that's it for the show. I thought I had some other stuff to talk about. Uh, Heisman is, is going to be this Saturday, which will be exciting. Again, I think Andre Williams, running back for Boston College, should get it. But it looks like it's probably going to be Jameis Winston. Um, and, and other news real quick, guys, for the show. Next show will be December 20th. That is next Friday. Uh, I'm shipping back out to Texas this week, so won't be able to do any shows. And... Uh, about it and also if you guys enjoyed make sure you uh, follow on spreaker.com and also subscribe on youtube uh have a past episodes there also have some discussion videos you could guys you guys can go check out and uh also follow me on twitter at short underscore sports 24 dash seven and uh on facebook the short sports show to keep up with some uh any news when I'm not doing my show you know post some updates of what's going on with players getting traded people moving around things like that and also just some random stuff that i feel like that is necessary to talk about in sports hope you guys enjoyed make sure you go ahead and follow and uh, and subscribe and i will see you guys december 20th next friday and uh we'll recap you know talking about the heisman talk and and other things getting ready for the bowl games which is actually next saturday so all that and more spreaker.com december 20th thank you guys for listening i will see you guys then